It's rooted in desires. It's rooted in what people love. When what you love is dictating your thought process, that's when you're going to come up with false ideas. When Najmi ida hawa ma dhanna sahibukum wa ma ghawa. Now, in yattabi'una illa dhan. They are they follow nothing but assumptions. This is Allah's comment now. They follow nothing at all but assumptions. The problem with this is the ayah did not begin with the word they. The ayah began with the word you. He said, you have named these names. You and your fathers. Allah did not send any authority with them. And then he says, they follow nothing but assumptions. What were we expecting Allah to say here? In tattabi'una illa dhan. You are following nothing but assumptions because the conversation was with you. So we switch from you to what? They. All the kids that are in this, in this uh, 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 hall that have at least a third grade, fourth grade education, I and we is first person. You is what? Second person. And he, she, they is third person. So we went from second person to third person. Second person means you're talking to someone. Third person means they're not here. You know, if I was talking to you and I said, I need you to understand. I need you to understand. And then I turn over here and say, they don't understand. You know what that means? You guys aren't worth my time anymore. I am so done talking to you. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about you. Some of you have uh, more than one child. You're Muslim. Probably many hands are going to go up. More than one child? Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah. You're Muslim. Definitely. Okay. So sometimes your kids, especially your daughters, they have a fight with each other in the back of the car. And they're like, Dad, um, Baba, can you tell someone to roll up their window? And the other one says, Dad, tell someone that someone that I need the air. Oh yeah? Well, someone didn't roll up the window last time and I had to roll it up. Blah, 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 blah. Someone, 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 someone. You're like, oh my God, just talk to each other. Why are they not talking to each other? Why are they someoneing each other? Because they're mad at each other. When you go from you to they, you know what that is an expression of? It's an abandonment. These people are not even worth talking to. You believe in ideas that are not worth believing in. You follow a, an ancestry that is not worthy of anything. In other words, you're not even worthy of being addressed anymore. You just need to be ex- ignored. So the question then is, if he's not talking to them, then who is he talking to? He's talking to the prophets. He's talking to the believers. He's turning to them and saying, by the way, you should know about these people. In yattabi'una illa dhan. So two audiences in one ayah. Two audiences inside one ayah. The audience of mushrikun in the beginning, and now the audience of the believers and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In yattabi'una illa dhan, they follow nothing but assumption. I want you to understand there are two things here uh, that are going to be talked about. I'll translate both so you can see the contrast. They follow nothing but assumption and whatever their, their selves fall in love with. They follow assumptions and whatever they love. Okay? So assumptions and love. Now I want you to understand why two things are being mentioned. Assumptions are an intellectual thing. I assumed there won't be any traffic. I assumed the weather is going to be good. I assumed the, this is about thought. Assumptions are about thought. But love is not about thought. Love is about what? Feelings, emotions. Love is about emotions. One part of the criticism is about their thoughts. And the other part of the criticism is about their emotions. And uh, is the second one, you can also consider the up of bayan. It's as if it's saying these thoughts are actually coming from these emotions. The emotions are dictating the thoughts. How many people here in any research field? If you're in a research field, you will find professors, intellectuals that are more concerned about their prestige than about the research. They will stop research from happening because it hurts their feelings if their thesis is proven wrong. 
it will hurt their agenda if the funding will stop because the research will go in a different direction. These are people of amazing thought, but those thoughts are being surrendered by what? Feelings. Greed, ego, you know, these kinds of things are stopping thought from happening. There are literally, you know, subjects that you can be banned from studying or researching because it makes somebody nervous. In other words, yes, human beings pride themselves on being intellectual creatures, but actually so much of what we do is driven by what? Our emotions. Well, not that whatever you love, whatever they love. Now, we are in a time where there's an explosion of ideas like never before. The mushrikun had it easy. They had just a few number of idols. We have an infinite number of idols on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. There's an explosion of ideas. There's an explosion of philosophies. There are new developments in how justice should be defined, how gender should be defined, how right and wrong should be defined, how family should be defined, how freedom should be defined, how reality should be defined. Everything is being questioned by everyone. And all these ideas are colliding with each other. Used to be shirk number one was in this continent and shirk number two was in that continent. Now it's all, this is a shirk fest. All ideas are colliding with each other. There's all kinds of van. But you know where all that van comes from? وَمَا تَحْوَ It's rooted in desires. It's rooted in what people love. When what you love is dictating your thought process, that's when you're going to come up with false ideas. This is, it's, a, it's a very powerful philosophical truth that Allah has given us. People will develop ideas that are actually convenient for them. They'll develop philosophies convenient for them. And nowadays, you might say in the American landscape, you have far left and far right, conservative and liberal, right? You can have those kinds of... And you might say, oh, Muslims are more like the conservatives. No, we're actually not. Oh, well, more like the liberals. No, we're actually not. Because each of them, their ideas are reacting to each other based on what each of them wants. The pursuit is not truth. The pursuit is still wants. Behind each of them is an agenda still. And we did Hawa before. Remember Hawa is to fall down? And Hawa is a kind of love for lowly things, right? These aren't some high philosophical love of truth, love of justice. No, it's love of self. It's just love of self. This is, the, uh, this is actually the ultimate God. The ultimate God isn't idols. It's what the self wants. The idols are just a projection of what, what the self wants. That's all they are. You know, I was telling you, Hindus, for example, they have a, a, a God called Lakshmi, the God of wealth. It's a God of wealth. Why is there a God of wealth? Who wants wealth? You do. That's why you have a God of wealth. Right? And you, you do what you do to get rich. So you better have a Lakshmi. This is, you don't have health insurance or car insurance. Have Lakshmi. You departmentalize gods. You departmentalize worship because you, it's based on your wants. And you developed all of this and you turned all of these, created all of these mythologies and you know, this is something that Sheikh Suhaib said today. I promised him, I'll tell him, I'll tell you guys. You know, like Ashabul Feel? Now we have Ashabul Feelings. <laughs> it was so good. I had this man. It's in my look, Ashabul Feelings. Right there. And you know what these feelings also do? It's something I call selective outrage. You know what that means? Muslims. Well, forget talking about Hindus and Christians. Let's talk about ourselves, man. This is for, the double is for me. It's for you. Somebody insulted the Prophet Wasallam. Oh, that's it. I got to burn a car. I, I got to break at least one store. We got we to do something. Somebody said something that might be insulting to Rasulullah Wasallam. Okay. But uh, women are not being given their share in inheritance. And uh, children are starving and corruption is rampant. And people are killing each other in the name of religion and all kinds of corruption that Islam came to destroy. And, and daughters are still considered a liability. And forced marriages are happening, which is the same as burying your daughter alive. All of that's happening. 
but somebody insulted the Prophet. All of that is not an insult to the Prophet? All of that's not an insult to the Quran? So, you know, we have a lot of outrage, but it's very selective. Why? Because this outrage is convenient. It's ma tahwal anfus. The other one that's too close to home. That's too close to home. I know literally imams in the, in the Western world that can be fired if they give a khutbah about the prohibition of selling alcohol. If they say don't earn haram money, they can lose their job. Why? Because the, don, the, the, the kind donation that came to the masjid came from the owner of you know, a, a, an establishment that, uh, mashallah, tabarakallah, right? So, you, you can, and what is that? This is actually, the God is not the, the, the God you're worshipping and you're facing the qibla and making salah five times a day. The actual God is the store that's making you money. وَمَا تَهْوَ anfus. That's your actual God. And in worship of that God, you're will, willing to silence the God that revealed the Qur'an. It's easy to read these ayat and say, oh, those kuffar back in the day, they were so hawa, obsessed. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave us Islam. <laughs> yeah, he did. The tragedy is, we have it, and we're doing this. The first part was they follow assumptions, right? How do you destroy assumptions? You, dry, you destroy assumptions with knowledge. You, you destroy assumptions with knowledge. So what happens sometimes? People believe in superstitions. Muslims believe in superstitions. And you think, if I just give them the evidence that this is superstition, they will change because if they have the false assumption, I give them knowledge, they'll be fine. And then you come to me and say, Ustad, my dad's doing shit. Then I told him that he shouldn't be doing that. And he got angry at me. What should I do? I gave him the haq. And then he gave me a slap. Well, because his assumption wasn't just going to be cured with knowledge. Behind that assumption was something Allah says, وَمَا تَهْوَ anfus. It's something he desires, something he loves. You're not addressing the root problem. You think you just educate people, everything will change. Allah goes after the heart, literally, the heart of the matter. وَمَا تَهْوَ anfus. And then the final words, they are, they are so telling. By the way, on this, this pointing at ourselves, when we look at this ayah, أَفَكُلَّمَا جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَهْوَىٰ أَنفُسُكُمْ Same, wor- same wording. إِسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ فَفَرِيقًا كَذَّبْتُمْ وَفَرِيقًا تَقْتُلُونَ In Surah Al-Baqarah, he says, he tells, t- tells the Israelites, every time a messenger came to you with something you didn't like, what is Allah telling us? Allah is telling us sometimes revelation says things we don't like. It goes against our definition. It goes against our culture. It goes against our trends. And whenever that happened, you became arrogant. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, it says what it says, but come on, seriously. You override what Allah says. Istakbartum. And then you started calling those people liars and others you were even willing to kill in your arrogance. This is what the Israelites did. But it doesn't sound like a description of the Israelites today. Sounds like a very common phenomenon among the Ummah. Now, the tragedy. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مِنْ رَبِّهِمُ الْهُدَىٰ الْهُدَىٰ All of this, while Allah had already, the guided, ultimate guidance had already come to them from the Rabb. This had already come. They didn't want to open this. They didn't want to read it. They didn't, they, even if they opened it, they wanted to be selective with it. Let's just read it for barakah. And then go to, there I've seen, I, I was in, what country was this? God, my, my map is all messed up. This was in Germany. I looked for a halal restaurant. I kid you not, I'm looking for a halal I found one. And it was a Pakistani restaurant, Eid Mubarak. So I'm going to have myself like a garlic naan and a chicken karai and it's going to be all good. I go into the restaurant, it's a huge bar. And in the middle of the bar, there's a mirror. And on the mirror, there's Ayatul Kursi. And I'm like, Wow. This is, this is pretty amazing. <laughs> this is like heaven and hell all at the same time. <laughs> so, may Allah protect this. Like, what do you... There's something in this guy's head. I know I'm doing something wrong, 
But I mean, there's still, I mean, I still believe. I still need barakat from Allah. So I'm going to assume that putting this here and showing my regard to God in this way on my terms, based on my dhan, then I can follow my feelings and make money without alcohol. You see that? إِنْ يَتَّبِعُونَ إِلَّا الظَّنِّ وَمَا تَهْوَ الْأَنْفُسِ وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مِنْ رَبِّهِمُ الْهُدَى I wrote two notes here. فِي مَا سَبَقْ وَفِي فَوْرِكُمْ هَذَا Allah has been sending guidance all along. And the ultimate one He just sent now. He just sent Al-Huda now. What more could you ask for? You know, I was contemplating on the way here. Uh, what, what I do when I'm driving here, it's a good 40-minute drive, is I turn my brain off and just, you know, from the notes, and I just think and just stare at the sky and the road. And uh, the thought today that came in my head was, it, like, it overwhelmed me today. You know what it was? In the opening passage, we saw Allah talked about the stars. And the stars have light, but you can barely see the light. And it's not enough to light up the world. But when the sun comes, the, just one sun and it gets lit up. The teachings of the previous prophets, they used to be a sun when they were alive. And then the light of those prophets' teachings became less and less and less like they became each like a star. In the, there's something left, but it's a star in the distance. You understand? There's some good in it, but it's surrounded by darkness. And it, I wondered for a moment if I was born at a time before the Quran and I was looking for guidance, what would I do? Even if I, would, even if I did find guidance, I would find a little, little star here, a little star there, and it wouldn't illuminate my world like وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مِنْ رَبِّهِمُ الْهُدَى The ultimate light, the ultimate guidance has come. Now you can see the reality of this world and the next for what it is. How are you still on van and hawa? How is this possible? The tragedy of this ayah, Allah put this in the same ayah with all those criticisms. It could have been a separate ayah. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ الْهُدَى But He put it in the same ayah. You're doing this, and Allah has given you this. Look, look at what you're doing. Look at what you're doing. I'm going to give you an analogy and then give you your break. The analogy I'm going to give you, I, I like to give you silly analogies that helps you understand abstract points better, right? Abstract ideas better. So here's, the, here's your silly analogy for a day. I, you know, I, I build my, my, my mom a kitchen, a, a brand new kitchen. Everything's set up. And she goes and buys a portable stove from Walmart. And she turns it on in the living room. She didn't do that. I'm just making this up. Okay, she, if she hears this, she's going to kill me. But anyway, she turns it on and she's almost setting the house on fire. Mom, there's a whole kitchen right there. What, what are you doing? What, what is this? this? This was there for a reason. This makes no sense. You have guidance and look, look at what you're doing. Allah gave you a mind. Allah gave you a heart. Allah gave you an inclination towards guidance. And then He gave you the perfect fit for it, His Quran. Where, where are you going? Like literally Allah asked the question, Aina tadhabun? Where are you going? Where are you going? Now we all slip. We all, you know, this is not just about shaming us and guilting us. We're not, we're human. We slip and we fall and we mess up. Sometimes we mess up really big. And Allah will, in these ayat, He's going to address that. Because I told you, the, the, these religions, these names that they came up with, does anything so far have to do with the Akhirah? Did you hear anything in their religions about the Akhirah? What, what does it seem like their religions are about? This life. What is it that they want in this life? Stuff that they love. Where did these names come from? From the wishes they have in this life. There is no concept of the next life. And we have, they did believe in an afterlife, but it's as if it's absent. We're going to have to figure out why it's absent. And what the connection is, not believing in the Akhirah and making these names. Or even while believing in the Akhirah doing this, that's what Allah is going to explain 
and then we're going to understand the next section of the surah. We'll take a quick break. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Hey guys, you just watched a small clip of me explaining the Qur'an in depth as part of the Deeper Look series. Studying the Qur'an in depth can seem like a really intimidating thing that's only meant for scholars. Our job at Bayyana is to make deeper study of the Qur'an accessible and easy for all of you. So take us up on that challenge. Join us for this study, the Deeper Look of the Qur'an, for this surah and many other surahs on BayyanaTV.com under the Deeper Look section.